Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to our ongoing game development for Complete Beginners tutorial series. Now, in the last chapter, we started working on uh, working with the Love Game Engine, and today we're going to take that one step farther. We're not going to get into coding yet. We've got one last task to really cover, and that's configuration of the engine. And this is very simple. We should be done this in about four or five minutes. So quick, quick topic, but a very important one. And what we're basically doing in this um, task is setting up love. Now, what I want you to realize is this task is completely optional. So if you, like in the last version, we didn't do this and it had no direct result on uh, how our game ran. So this is only something you need to do uh, when you specifically need to change something. But the things you need to change are quite common. Things like the icon, the title, the window position, the window's dimensions, etc. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to look at today. And then we'll get further into coding. The next thing is on basic graphics. So if you want to skip ahead to a straight coding thing, do so. But you'll miss out on this one because this is all about configuring the Love Game Engine. And remember when we started off in our last... Here's our, the end point for our, our last video, and we basically ended up with uh, printing hello world on the screen at the position 100 by 100. Now, we had no control over how the screen was created. And a key thing I want you to remember is that the entry point to your game is love looks for the file called main.lua. So it automatically looks for that as the startup point and says, okay, every frame I'm gonna call update or draw, or at the beginning I'm gonna call load, and at the end I'm gonna call quit. But the truth of the matter is there's actually one other file it looks for first. And if it doesn't find it, it just skips ahead. But if it does find it, it uses it for configuration. And that file is conf, C-O-N-F dot Lua. So we're gonna go ahead and create one today. So just add a new script to your, uh, New full, to your uh, directory somewhere and call it conf.lua. Now this has to be beside main.lua. So at the end of the day, they should be in the same location. So let me just show you on disk, uh, untitled, here we go. So conf.lua and main.lua are side by side. So again, this is a completely optional file. If it doesn't find it, it will go with defaults. But now that we've got this file here, it takes a function called love Dot conf and it passes in a table. Remember back to the data types earlier, we said a table is a collection of you know various bits of data all together into one container. Well, it's passing us in such a container and we fill out specific values for it. And I'll go into some of those specific values in a little bit, but the first one I'm gonna show you is t.window.title. And this is a string and this is the name of your app. Okay, so here you can see we've now created this file called conf.lua that is going to be called when the Lua game engine starts up. This is the very first file that is called. And it's going to call this love.conf um, function and pass it in t. And then inside of t, which t could be called whatever you want, but the naming convention is to call it t. But So you can call this uh, configuration data or whatever. We're going to go with t because, like I said, that is the convention. And it expects a property called dot window dot title, for example, to set the title. And if something's missing, again, it just goes with the defaults. So now that we've set this one here, so this t dot window dot title, go ahead and run our game. And now you'll see this is the name of your app appears at the top. So that is how you would set the title for the window that your app is created at. And there's other things we can do as well. Things like um, t.window.width equals 320, t.window.height equals 200. So now we have a very small window. Okay, it did not like one of those two parameters. Or I spelt height wrong. I did, I always spell height wrong. Sorry about that. So there you can see, if you pass in gibberish, it's just ignored. So now that I actually typed height correctly, and there you'll see. So that's how you can control things like your window title, uh, the icon that appears at the top left corner here, uh, the width, if to run it full screen or not, um, uh, anti-aliasing, etc. I'll actually go through all of the options available in a split second, but this is where you can figure them all in this just this single function call, and you're filling in this table called well, T. Uh, and it's got these various parameters, which again, there's a quick reference for them. I will show it to you in a second. Now, there's one thing here that's very, very, very handy. Is we can actually go t.window.console equals true. And what console does is attaches a command prompt to your, um, your application or a console window to your application. At least it should. All right. Are you hidden? Uh, here, I got two running. Let me just get rid of that run okay one second oh my bad sorry it's just t.console it's not part of window 
like so and go ahead and run it and now you'll see in the background it's loaded this love console and you might sit to yourself and say, why the hell do I want that? Why do I want this window in the background? Well, what this is really handy for is it gives you access to something called um, standard out, which is basically a simple way of printing debug information or um, just information you need in the background while your game runs. And I'll, I'll show you an example of it now that we've got this up and going. By the way, closing that console window will also close the window that it creates. So they're now related with each other. So now that we have this console, let's switch back to our code for a second. And here you see, like I said, love will be called, love.load will be called once when your application is loading. But now we can get ahead and just use the standard Lua function called print and some message to be displayed when your app starts, as an example. So now we'll go ahead and run it. And now that we have that console attached, you'll see this message is printed out here. And then at the same time, you could also use it in something like update and update is going to be called a lot so you're going to see exactly how much it is actually called there you go so there's every time updates called it's being printed in the background so that attaching a console is a very handy uh, thing to do at times now another thing that we can do is actually turn modules on and off and if you go to the um, the love documentation, you'll see that it's broken up to a number of different modules. So uh, love.graphics, uh, love.touch, love. So audio, etc. All these different pieces that you might use in your game. Well, if you're not using them, you can tell it not to use them as well. You can so you can keep resource usage down a bit, use a little bit less memory, etc. And those can be configured using. So say for example, we wanted to turn the touch off because we're not using touch. We can go t.modules.touch equals false. And this will cause the, the touch module not to be loaded. Now, by default, they will all be loaded, by the way. Uh, so that's it. That is the configuration component of the Love Game Engine. And it's, again, if you don't set anything, it will just load with the default. So basically, you're overriding the defaults for when you want to say, set your excuse me, set your Windows title, etc. Now, I'm gonna go over to, uh, here's love2d.org's wiki page for the config file. Here are the possible values for T. Um, so, identity is the save directory. Your file is a version, is a string representing, you know, your current build number, completely optional to use it or not. Console is what we just used for turning that window off and on, the, the console window in the background. Accelerometer as joystick, um, it's an iOS or Android specific function. Uh, external storage, gamma correction, again, kind of niche things that you'll you'll need them, you'll understand them when you need them, I guess is the best way to put it. And as you can see, title, which we just use, icon you can use to set a file path of the image to use as the icon for your application. Your width, your height, your, sorry, your width, your height, if it's borderless, if the windows can be resized, uh, minimum window size, if it is resizable for the width, for the height, uh, full screen, I would have demonstrated full screen, but unfortunately my screen capture goes completely stupid, but you can have your window go basically uh, take up the full screen or not, and you can have it actually desktop full screen, or what is the other term they use? Exclusive, which basically means one is a full screen size window, and the other is actually in full screen mode. Um, next we've got uh, vSync, which is to wait for a vertical sync between drawing. So a lot of times a, res a monitor will work at a fixed resolution. So for example, my laptop panel here works at 60 hertz, which means it refreshes 60 times a second. And if you turn the vSync on, it means that your graphics will only draw during the refresh rate. So it, it will limit your graphic drawing to the rate of your monitor, but it will also reduce the flickering because you can actually have it, if you're drawing more than your monitor can handle, you're gonna be in mid refresh, which will cause a flicker effect. Um, so you're kind of trading off a maximum frame rate of say 60 frames per second, depending on what your monitor is, for uh, no flicker. And which one you want to go with there is an age old battle and I'm not going to get into that one. Uh, MSAA is um, anti-aliasing, which is a function, is a way of um, basically blending pixels together to make the image smoother. Um, if you're trying to get that pixel-ish look, the chunky look of retro 8-bit, you wanna actually turn this off. Uh, but if you have a nice detail and you want good blending between surfaces, uh, it can actually really help. Uh, truth of the matter is, it's much more noticeable with a 3D game, uh, texturing on a 3D game than it is on a 2D game. But even on a 2D game, especially if you are trying to get that fat, chunky pixel look, probably something you're gonna to wanna to turn off. 
Uh, display, this is to say which monitor you want to use. So if you have multiple monitors, you would pass in display equals two to draw on the second monitor. If you had three, you would pass in three to make it launch on the third. Uh, generally niche and generally you'll want to stick to one or make this user configurable. Uh, high DPI is for retina type displays. Uh, it specifically says retina type displays and my, the laptop we're running on right now actually is a high DPI monitor and I haven't played around with if this set wor setting works. But basically what it does is um, it treats it as a lower resolution monitor kind of to a certain degree and just uses a twice as detailed version. So you get a nice crisper uh, result and you use twice as many or four times as many pixels as the other form. Um, but otherwise treats it pretty much the same as a lower resolution version. That's one of those things you definitely, I, I need to go in a lot more detail to do it justice, but uh, that's what high DPI is for, for displaying on these monitors that have really, really, really high resolutions on a fairly small screen, you would enable high DPI. Also for uh, the iPad retinas, example, for example. Um, and then we have X and Y, you would use that to position where your Windows starting top left corner is. And then after that, we have all the different modules you could turn off and on, you can see them right here. And the modules actually are documented well on the wiki, so you can see what each one does. And if you go into a specific module, say like love.mouse, um, the first line of the wiki entry will actually explain what that module does. So you can, if you're not using uh, the particular functionality, so if you're not using fonts, you're not using uh, joystick or um, touch, etc., you can easily turn them off and save a little bit of resources if, if that's where you want to go. Uh, but that's basically it. That is configuring the Love Game Engine. Again, it's quite simple. You create this function or this file called conf, C-O-N-F dot Lua in the root level of your directory right beside main.lua. And unlike main.lua, this one is completely optional. So your game will run if you don't put it, but you get default settings. And then you, you implement this function called love.conf and you, it takes in a parameter of type T or of named T. And that is just a table that we saw. And you can see over here again in the wiki that we just went through all of the various values that you can put in. And as we saw earlier when I did a typo, if you pass in gibberish, it's just ignored. If you don't overload something, it gets whatever the value is right here. So you can see uh, width. We didn't. If we didn't set a value for width, the starting width will be 800. If we didn't provide a title, our default title would have been untitled, etc. But that's it. That's all we're going to cover today. And then uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to get into graphics. So that's lots of fun. Configuration, not quite as fun, but definitely important. And one of those things you should probably know up front. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. See you all soon.